Hey guys, how's it going? It's Andy from Magu Investing. Happy Thursday. For the past couple weeks, especially since coronavirus has popped up, my schedule for making YouTube videos has been mainly Monday, Wednesday, Friday. But yesterday I was just spending probably about six hours reading about managing deer populations and I was pretty over it. So I sat down and I started doing research for this video. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about airlines and specifically out of the five main airline stocks that I've picked out, which are my favorites for a long-term investment and which of them I think you should stay away from at all costs. So in the past couple of videos, I've talked very poorly about airline stocks overall, mainly because of the massive bailout that they've gotten from the federal government and just the horrible state that they're in right now. With the current state of the world, airline travel is down between 90 and 95 percent, and a lot of these companies are expecting to see zero dollars for their earnings for this year. But while I'm very vocal about how I don't really love airlines, I understand that a lot of people feel very differently than I do. So in this video, I wanted to do some analysis for the five main companies I wanted to talk about. I'm going to talk about the big four airlines. So that'll be Delta, United, uh, Southwest, and American. And then I'm going to throw Alaska in there just because I think they've got some pretty interesting things on their book that I wanted to talk about. Based off the current state of the world, this is probably not a great time to get into airlines. Just based off everything that's going on, you know, everything's still on lockdown. These airlines are struggling for funds. And so they had the bailout that it's going to help them for a little bit. But pretty much everywhere you look, it seems like a recession is going to happen. At this point, we officially can't be in one yet because the textbook definition of recession is two consecutive quarters of decreasing GDP and increasing uh, unemployment. The unemployment is skyrocketing. The GDP is likely going to go down, but it hasn't been the two full quarters yet. So a little bit over 10 years ago, we had the financial crisis of 2008 to 2009. And that's kind of an interesting way that you can look to see how these companies have been reacting to really tough economic times. But from everything I've seen, I wanted to kind of wait to make this video to see which of these airlines ended up taking the bailout from the government. At this point, it seems like all of them have at this point. So that's kind of the reason why I'm talking about them now. But I thought it was really interesting because from everything I saw, the bailout is especially focused on keeping employee retention at least through around the fall. And so this isn't something that'll protect them for a recession. So if you think a recession is going to be coming, I would be very hesitant to consider taking a position in these companies anytime soon, especially because they're likely going to continue to fall further. I wanted to break down these five companies, give my opinions, and kind of pick one or two out of the five that I think could be a decent long-term investment. Before we get started, I gotta say that I'm not a licensed financial advisor and I highly recommend talking to a professional, someone can find you the best places to put your money going forward. In addition, I really appreciate if you hit that like and subscribe button as it would help my channel out a lot. We're almost at 2,000 subscribers and thank you all for that. Also, everything you see in this video is just me giving my opinions on a stock, so do your own research before making a decision. So at this point, the main four airlines that I was talking about, so that's Delta, United, uh, American, and Southwest, have around 80% of the domestic flights in the US, which is almost a monopoly. When you look at the examples of potential monopolies that you see out in the world, especially in the US, uh, airlines are kind of the big one that people talk about. So this big four makes up most of the pie when it comes to air travel. But when you kind of look beneath the hood for these four, four companies and then also throw Alaska in there, there's a lot of differences between the companies, especially in their fundamentals. So that's what I'm going to be talking about today. Because at this point, we can talk about, you know, how they've reacted in the past, but you know, right now no one's flying. So pretty much everyone is at a level playing field at this point because, you know, depending on what type of business they're operating, they could be focusing on business travel, they could be focusing on leisure. But at this point, the only thing that they have going for them is what the stuff they have on the books right now. So that's what I wanted to talk about. So far, Delta, ticker symbol DAL, has been a stock that I've talked about a little bit. It kind of popped up under my radar mainly because Warren Buffett had such a large position and had to go public with the fact that he was selling a lot of his shares because he owned uh, more than 10% of the company. So that was kind of in my radar for a little bit. And some of the horrible news stories I saw was the fact that they're burning through around $60 million in cash per day. Looking at their fundamentals, revenue is kind of a good sign when I take a look at it. After, especially after the last recession in 2008 to 2009, you can see nice recoveries in their year-over-year -year quarterly growth. And so if you think that a recession is going to be coming, which at this point, all indicators that I've seen kind of point to it as 100%, that boost after the recession makes me feel pretty good about Delta going forward. Also, the other thing I wanted to point out is some of the main things I'm going to be talking about in this video is I'm going to be looking at revenue, long-term debt, and net profit margins, because I think those are going to be the three most important fundamentals to look at. Depending on what website you go to, you can just go through a rabbit hole of just the amount of numbers that you can see on there, and you can compare it in any different way. So the way I'm doing my analysis is I'm going to compare the revenue growth, the long-term debt, and the net profit margins. And so 
So far, I've talked about revenue. Long-term debt for Delta is pretty large, but when you put it as debt to equity ratio, it doesn't look as bad compared to some of the companies that we're gonna be talking about in the rest of this video. Also, the net profit margin for the company is sitting around 10.1. And 10.1, when we compare it to some of the other companies in this video, it looks pretty good. So overall, Delta kind of gives my gets my thumbs up. So currently, Delta is sitting at a net profit margin of around 10.1. This means that 10.1% of their overall revenue gets converted into income after you take into account all the expenses. So that basically means that after looking at the operating costs that they have, how much money are they gonna be pocketing? During this time where they're gonna be making pretty much no money, the reason I wanted to look at net profit margin is because it will show how quickly the company can kind of gather cash once things go back to normal. So if you see a company that has a really low net profit margin, the fact that they have no income right now, it means that they're gonna take a while to get their reserves back that they had prior to this crazy time. Also, when looking at the way that it's been moving in the past, it's currently sitting down around 58 to around 60% down. So this is a incredible discount. That's kind of the reason why a lot of people have been targeting them because you know, you see a lot of these other companies have rebounded a little bit in the past couple weeks, but these airline stocks have continued to fall. So that's kind of why they've been on their radar. So sitting down around 60%, if you think it's a good long-term investment, this is an incredible discount. Looking at United, you see kind of similar patterns to what we saw with Delta. Currently it's sitting around 64% down, which compared to all of the rest of the companies that we're gonna be talking about is the lowest out of the five. When you look at the revenue growth over time, you see a nice bounce back after the financial recession, but some of the things that kind of stood out to me is they did not really increase their revenue over time as much as I would have liked to see that. After the incredible growth you saw after the recession, they spiked and then kind of went horizontal for a while. So that does not make me feel super great about the company. In the past couple of videos, I've talked about wanting to see steady growth over the longest bull market that we've ever seen, because when things are going well, I expect my money to be doing very well, and especially the company to be doing the same. And so the fact that I'm seeing pretty steady levels of revenue over these probably the strongest bull market we've ever seen does not make me feel as great. When we look at the long-term debt sitting around 15 billion, that's pretty high when you compare it to the uh, shareholder equity of around 10 billion. So the debt to equity ratio is not as good compared to something like Delta. But the next company we're gonna be talking about is kind of, it's gonna be the massive red flag that we're gonna be talking about. But before we get there, the net profit margin for United is sitting around 7%. So comparing that to Delta, uh, with around 10%, you can see that there's a difference between these two companies, especially in their revenue, long-term debt, and their net profit margins. Next up, we're gonna be talking about American, ticker symbol AAL. From the research I did for this video, it seems like it has some of the highest percentage of international travel out of the rest of the five companies that we're talking about. Currently, 30% of their revenue comes from international travel. And I'm gonna talk about that at the end because I think that might be a massive problem going forward. In the past couple years, international exposure has been a really good thing. I talked about this in my casinos video. Considering how many moving parts are gonna to have to go through to kind of make international travel possible again, it's kind of a red flag for me. Looking at revenue, things look pretty decent. You had a nice spike in 2014, and then it went kind of horizontal after that. Nothing that really stands out as being really good or really bad. But when you look at the operating costs and the profit margins, it's the worst by far. And so when you look at that and then you show the long-term debt to equity, that's when the massive red flags start coming up. I talked in the past that when companies have really low equity in their company, it really screws up these debt to equity ratios because it's a ratio of how much debt they have over the amount of equity. So as equity decreases and it goes into single digits, it makes the debt to equity ratio spike and gets to the point where if it goes negative, it just kind of throws off the entire graph. So when I see a graph that looks this messed up, that is a huge red flag for me. And another thing that kind of sets them apart from the rest of the companies is the fact that they have significantly more employees than the other four companies, sitting at around 130,000 employees. So during a normal year when revenue is relatively stable, that's a totally fine thing. But the fact that right now there's no money coming in and they're gonna have to be paying these employees means that they're gonna to have to take a lot of money to pay the payroll that they currently have. So that's kind of a red flag for me. Looking at Southwest, I see a lot of positives. One of the biggest things that I saw was an article talking about for the past 16 months, they've been the only airline that's had positive cash flow for the entire time. And in an industry that has been relatively stable in the past decade, this is kind of shocking to me. Looking at their profit margin of 10% and the incredibly low long-term debt to equity ratio that they have of around 0.3, there seems to be a lot of good things to talk about about Southwest, especially when you look at the long-term debt and how they've been managing it over the past year and a half, two years before this crash, has me feeling very good about Southwest as a potential investment. But when you look at the discount you're getting, Southwest is only down around 39% compared to the 50 to 60% that we've seen with the other companies. So you're gonna have to take this into account. Looking at Alaska, I was pretty impressed with the overall revenue. It's very steady and I like the things I see on there. 
there's not as many things to kind of nitpick with revenue compared to some of the other companies we've talked about. Airline travel has been relatively stable over the past decade, but I like what I've been seeing and I like the resilience that they saw during the last recession. When I look at long-term debt to equity, the debt has been steadily increasing, but it has been matched pretty well by the uh, shareholder equity that we've seen. And so that gives a debt to equity ratio of around 0.6, which is pretty solid. It's not as good as the 0.3 that we saw with Southwest, but anything below one at this point, I'm pretty happy with. Also, when you look at the last recession, they had a debt to equity ratio of around one in 2006, and then they peaked out at around 2.5. So when you compare that to the numbers that they have right now, they're already below the amount of debt to equity that they had in the past. So that's kind of setting them up for success, in my opinion. And then finally, their net profit margin was around 8.75, which is pretty solid, but it's not as good as the double digit that we've seen with a couple other companies. Okay, so now that I've kind of laid out all the fundamentals that I wanted to talk about, it's time to break down the companies overall and talk about which one or two I would consider investing in in the future. First, let's go to American, ticker symbol AAL. And pretty much everything that I've seen for this company is a massive red flag. They have the most amount of leverage for their company, they have the most amount of employees, and their long-term debt to equity ratio is abysmal. So based off of that, American Airlines is gonna be a no-go for me for probably the next decade until they can prove that they can kind of turn things around. Okay, next I wanted to kind of compare the two other main airlines. I know Southwest can be considered in the big four, but I kind of consider that to be a leisure travel compared to the business travel of stuff like uh, United and Delta. Looking at the difference between United and Delta, I saw a lot of similarities when I talked about the importance of business travel for these companies. And depending on who you talk to, I personally think that when things start opening up for the first time, that business travel is gonna be the first part of the airline industry that's gonna come back because the need for travel for business is a lot higher than the overall need for maybe pleasure, especially if you think that there's still risks associated with the virus. So when things first start to open up, I personally think that business travel is gonna be one of the first things to come back. And then looking at the main three fundamentals that we've talked about, revenue didn't have anything that really stood out to me, but the net profit margin was kind of a big one for me. When Delta is sitting at around 10% and you compare that to the 7% of United, you definitely get a, a check for Delta over United. And then when you look at the long-term debt to equity ratio, where uh, Delta is currently sitting around 0.9 and United is sitting at around 1.6, it starts to kind of separate the two in my opinion. The only thing that United really has going for it is the fact that it has fallen the furthest. So you're getting a better discount with United, but based off of the overall fundamentals, I think that getting relative stability with the books is significantly better than you know taking an extra 10% discount. Especially because likely these companies are gonna be hit very hard in the upcoming months as you know, depending on how long this takes to resolve, these companies are gonna be burning through cash even more. So personally, if I was looking to take a long-term position in uh, the main three companies when you're looking at Delta, United, and American, I would personally pick Delta, ticker symbol DAL, because of the solid books that they have and the nice uh, net profit margin that they have. Now let's talk about the last two, Southwest and Alaska. Based off of what I looked at for the fundamentals, I thought Alaska was gonna be way more interesting than it actually ended up being. It looks very average for pretty much everything in their books, but compared to something like American, it looks pretty solid. Southwest has really impressed me when I looked at the overall fundamentals that they have. Seeing the article about Southwest having positive cash flow for the past 16 quarters is very impressive to me. Also, it had a very low debt to equity ratio of 0.3 compared to Alaska, which is also relatively low of around 0.6. And then Southwest also beats out Alaska for the net profit margin of around 10.25 compared to around eight. And so Southwest kind of checks all the box for a solid company that you could look to invest in in an industry that's been hit really hard. But when you compare Alaska and Southwest to the other three companies that I've talked about, you kind of have to decide what type of investment you're looking for. So now that I've kind of picked Southwest between uh, Southwest and Alaska and then Delta out of the other two, you kind of have to decide what you think is gonna be more likely to happen. There's a lot of different scenarios for how airlines are going to rebound from this hit that we've seen. So my personal opinion is I think that business travel is gonna be the first thing to come back because businesses, they're gonna be pushing their employees out the door because they want their business to come back operating at full force. But I think if the virus is still kind of sitting around and it's not as big of a threat as it is currently, a lot of people will continue to stay home to kind of protect themselves and their loved ones. So if you personally think that's what's gonna happen, I think Delta kind of edges out Southwest. But I love Southwest as a company and so my alliance is kind of towards them. So I'm leaning towards Southwest because they have a better book and I think that leisure travel will come back in full force when it's finally allowed to. Based off the fact that people aren't gonna be able to take vacations for a long time, I think the travel industry is gonna rebound very well, even if the recession's going on. 
especially with the discount and competitive pricing that Southwest has, I think that they're going to be the preferred airline when things go back to normal. So that, that's just my personal opinion on the two. I think Delta and Southwest are very good stocks, but it really depends on where you think that the overall world is going to head. So let me know what you thought about my analysis of these five airline companies. Which one is your favorite? Do you think that Southwest and Delta are good picks for what I thought? Or do you see something in their books or maybe their history that kind of stuck out to you that didn't really pop up onto my radar? Let me know in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching, stay inside, and I'll see you in the next video.